run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. aligns himself with the truth and it's time for you to choose a side you're listening to alex jones i tell you whenever you talk to one of these ranchers from missouri or nevada or texas or it could even be in minnesota the, the, you know, these old guys that just work on the land every day and work from dusk till dawn, and their families are just so straight shooters, good people. It, it, it actually makes me really sad because both my grandfathers uh, were just like this guy. In fact, my mom's dad look, looks just like this guy. And it, it makes me angry because this country used to be so free compared to this, and we are just being overrun by the feds themselves under UNESCO and the UN and the Agenda 21 Treaty and Bill Clinton's executive order. They already took millions of acres, it was almost 2 million in 1997, Clinton laid them off use in Utah, and it had been, been public land people had grazing rights on, they just stole them, even though the law said they couldn't. Some families there longer than uh, uh, Mr. Bundy. And it turned out it had the only clean burning coal in North America in it that could pass the EPA rules, had no mercury in it. Now it turned out China had the only other reserves in the world, and so their their coal doubled in value literally in one month, and it turned out Bill Clinton was invested in it. So there's all sorts of scams going on here. But 
I already showed the article out of the L.A. Times where we don't know why it's the highest beast prices everywhere. I guess it's the drought and, and ranchers getting out of it. No, my family, after ranching in Texas since 1829, is basically getting out of it. Still got a couple hundred head, but that's, you know, used to have thousands. Uh, I'm not going to say names of some of my friends, but folks, you've heard them on the air, some really good, well-known big ranchers. I'm talking tens of thousands of heads of Black Angus. Uh, they sold their herd last year, selling their 12,000-acre ranch. They're done. You cannot make money in it, and the government harasses you. And that's why beef prices are off the charts, and the big meat packers run scams now. There's no real auctions anymore. And I know Mr. Bundy can talk about that. I'm ranting. It just frustrates me to come from a long farming, ranching heritage and to see it absolutely being destroyed. We could supply the world in the late 1950s with beef. We can't even supply ourselves now. We are cursed with filthy government. We're becoming poor because of the globalists and their program of Agenda 21, not because we just can't produce anymore. Now, I'm ranting. Uh, Mr. Bundy, talk about the forces they're massing, so they've moved back into their military camps. How many more head of cattle do you have? Where do you expect this to go? You told me the militia's there. Uh, what's happening? You've got the floor. Well, we're, one thing that's happened, and they have uh, rounded up and stole uh, 300 of my cattle. They've got them in a compound. They're on the ranch yet. Uh, the only thing needs to be open. The gate needs to be opened up, but let those cattle go back to their uh, natural habitat, and uh, those cattle will be out there uh, raising, uh, use some more uh, beef. Uh, but what's happening here is that the forest has actually kept me from operating and taking care of my cattle, and, uh, and of course, they have used great forces express, expressed here to gather these cattle. Uh, let me explain a little bit about uh, where we are politically, I guess. Our, okay, hang on. Uh, yes, sir, go ahead and get into that. I know you've been doing a lot of interviews and are tired. Oh, yeah, that's all right. I've got interruptions here. Okay, excuse me, but uh, <clears throat> I want, to, want you to understand that... We're fighting a, a government here with unlimited power, and I, you know, we talk about ownership and uh, property. And I was trying to lay out the fact that well, I do live in a state. We do. This is a sovereign state of Nevada. This is the uh, property of Clark County. The people, we, the people of Clark County, Nevada, owns this land, and then we're fighting against this uh, government that was making a show to the United States people that they have this power to uh, basically take over our state or state law and, and you know, or even our sheriff uh, power. And so we're standing here uh, with a, a, a question in our mind, who is going to have this power when, it's, when we're done with it? You know that uh, that was sort of something that the people of the Revolutionary War thought. When we seem to be like we're in the same position as those people were. How are we going to get our liberties back? We've been here in this country for 200 years, from our Pilgrim Fathers to our uh, Patriot Fathers, and we still don't have our freedoms and liberty. And so we fight the strongest government in the world, the British Army. They had to, and, and guess what we did? We won. And then we created uh, uh, our states and a constitution and uh, and Nevada come under a statehood under equal footing. We do have our liberty and freedoms according to our Constitution, but here on this land, we've lost them at this time right now. So we've got a, a battle to gain, gain our Constitution and uh, liberties back. So your bottom line, like Paul Revere, you're making your stand. You're telling folks we're being overrun by an out-of-control tyranny, UN run. It literally is in the treaties, folks. And they want this land, they want the precedent for receivership for the national debt to kick people off their own land or to kick them off the land they have uh, surface rights and forage rights and water rights to. And if they can do this to Mr. Bundy, they can do it to anybody. Um, now, you have seen a lot of support. What do you make of the governor beginning to tepidly, but, but, but at least he's doing it, criticize the feds? I mean, I think the governor ought to call out the state police 
uh, and point out the state law and common law, and, and they ought to start arresting people for stealing those cattle. Well, they should. By state law, uh, they definitely uh, should be doing this, and the, the governor should be the lead of this. He should say this will not happen in the state of Nevada, and we. Uh, and I want to stress this point. I rank by all of the laws of the state of Nevada. I rank by uh, United States federal codes very little. In other words, I disobey and uh, give no jurisdiction and authority to the federal government, but I give honor and pledge to all of the laws of the state of Nevada. Now, our governor is the leader of this. He should be the one that's fighting this battle, not me. He should be the one that's saying, hey, these cattle are stolen cattle. This is a valid right. Turn, open the gates and get these cattle back home. Well, bottom line, I've looked at the law. I know the laws. They are violating the laws. And what do you think of the 250 armed troops, militarized uh, aircraft, uh, uh, surveillance poles, uh, surveilling your house? I mean, it's an army for one rancher. It just shows how disconnected uh, this government is. Well, it, it shows how disconnected this government is, but look at how disconnected we the people are. How would we, would we ever believe this could happen to uh, a rancher, an uh, individual, uh, a family ranch? I mean, why would they show this kind of force? It's sort of a hard question, but I'll tell you, we feel danger. We feel our liberties and freedoms are gone. We feel uh, access uh, to our, 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 our land gone. Besides feeling that they stole their cattle, uh, it's just really quite confusing of, of why the, this government would do what they're doing. But let me tell you why. You know what I tell them that when they come and try to put the force and they, you know, the they want to know what I'll do. And what I say I'll do, I said I'll do whatever it takes. And they want to know what that means. Well, I will do whatever it takes to, to preserve our rights and liberties and our statehood. And, I, and, and so because I make that statement, they seem to say, well, this man, he can't stand. We're going to have to take him down. And so they're putting that much pressure on me and my family and my property that they could actually show America that they have strength enough to take this last man down, and, uh, and that's where they're at. Well, that's right, and we've seen thousands of people, hundreds at a time, showing up to support you, and I think you know they know they're going to have a major propaganda defeat if they do set you up or do something. No one's going to buy it if they plant drugs on you, whatever. Uh, but the, the sky is the limit with these criminals. Uh, specifically, let's get into... The, the mainstream media we've heard where they're implying you're saying you're going to be violent or whatever, if, in which you haven't really said, if they're going after your property, uh, what's the line in the sand? I mean, they've already stolen 300 of the cattle, and now they've got snipers um, aiming at the peaceful crowds. They arrested people, for those that don't know, while well, the governor's spoken out, who just stood there on the side of the road with their signs. Uh, the feds, uh, the BLM says that's not allowed in America either. They're not just trampling property rights. Uh, and land use rights, they're now trampling uh, the First Amendment as well. Uh, yes, uh, you know, I've had two uh, kids, uh, two of my uh, children hassled, and, uh, and one of them arrested and abused, and uh, then uh, after two days, or you know, they turn him loose on the streets of Las Vegas uh, without, you know, even charging him with anything serious at all. In other words, they, they're abusive. And, uh, you know, that's something that we're having a hard time with. Uh, yeah. Describe what happened there. Yeah, where they just kidnapped uh, one of your sons. Well, they, they he was along the road, side of the road, high, state highway, and they, they took a, and uh, surrounded him. He was actually taking pictures on the right away of the state highway. They surrounded him with, a, with vehicles and uh, armed people, took him to ground, down, uh, stood on his head, stood on his uh, neck, grounded his ground his head into the rocks and gravel, and uh, then they put the handcuffs on him and, and just tight as they could, abused him, threw him in the car. He sat in a in a, a truck. He said truck. I don't know how. I mean, open or how it was for like four hours over in the same compound where they got the cattle. And then they transferred him to Henderson, Nevada, put him in the jailhouse there and stayed there overnight. 
The next day they transported him to the 